How's it going everybody? Gunner here. Um, I'm out on the river today and I just switched up to a, a full sinking line that doesn't have a leader on it. So I thought I'd go over my, my simple uh, smallmouth bass leader. That's also the same leader I use for uh, brown trout. It's, it's basically the leader I use for everything except pike and muskie. Um, now all you need is, is two leader materials. I kind of have the mindset of the, the kiss rule for all my leaders. Just keep it simple, stupid, right? Kiss. That's so all I'm going to have is 20 pound and 12 pound test. And this goes for floating line, intermediate, and sinking. And basically a rule of thumb for all you guys who are getting into this. Floating line, long leader, intermediate, a little shorter, sinking line, short. And so I might throw an 8 foot leader on a floating line, a 6 foot leader on an intermediate, and a 4 foot leader on a sinking line. So with that system, that 8, 6, and 4 float, intermediate, sink, following the keep it simple stupid. I'm not worried about formulas or spacing or whatever. Just do the last two feet of 12 pound test. That's all you gotta worry about. So on the eight foot leader, the floating line, you got six feet of 20, two feet of 12, right? On the intermediate, you got four feet of 20, two feet of 12. On the sink, you got two feet of 20, two feet of 12, right? So that, you're not worried about it, you're not thinking about it. So just to interject, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm using saltwater monofilament, but this is saltwater mono, and the reason why I use saltwater is because it's thicker. It's literally a, a larger diameter. And all that does is it gives it a little bit more stiffness. The intent is for abrasion resistance, which is also a bonus, especially when you're fishing for bass and stuff and their pads are beating up on your leaders and whatnot. But it's really designed for abrasion resistance, but that stiffness helps to turn over flies. And going down to 12, the 12's nice and limp. That's, that's what's allowing that fly to breathe and swim. Now something I'm gonna do between my 20 pound and my 12 pound, I'm gonna put a cool product that's called an Invisa Swivel. And what it is, is it's a swivel made out of the same copolymer as fluorocarbon. Now that's pretty cool because one, it's nearly invisible underwater. Two, it doesn't have any mass. I mean, it has a little bit, but it's, it's not the density of steel. So you don't get this weird dip in your, in your leader. It doesn't affect a fly's ability to suspend. Now, when you have big flies, when you have bulky flies, even, even a four inch fly, if it's not tied perfectly symmetrical and you're casting that thing 100 mile an hour with your line speed, it's gonna twist like crazy. Now, line twist does two things that are, are both really, really bad. <laughs> First and foremost, it's, it's really hard on your fly line coating. It's a really quick way to retire a fly line to so get a lot of twist. Second, and what's, it's really just a frustration thing, but when your line twists up, the loops can form knots and you go to shoot line and it hits your guides and you can't actually shoot line because you got a mess on the floor and everything's twisted in a knot. So that's the Invisa swivel and I'll put all this in the description for you guys. But I'm going to come in. And you can see how scientific that was, right? And I'm just going to put a perfection loop at the back ends. Then I'm coming in with my terminal connection. You might have something called a welded loop on your fly line. Feel free to just loop to loop these two together here. And there's my, my two feet of 20 pound. Now I'm gonna come in, now that I got my 20 pound rigged up, I'm gonna come in, it's uh, the 25 pound in business level. That's gonna have a, a big enough hole to accommodate your, your 20 pound saltwater monofilament here. If I can get that through there. You can use whatever knots you like. If you're a clinch guy or an improved clinch guy, I always do uni knots. And so now what's really nice is I have two feet of 20 pound that goes to a swivel that's weightless. And now every time I change flies, you know, if I cut back into this and I only have a foot here, now I can just cut it here and retie my tippet and I never have to mess with this 20 pound for the whole season. You know, if it wears out, you get a nick and then you replace it, but you don't have to deal with this. All you're dealing with is that 12 pound test every time you change flies, use up your leader. So I might come in, you know, a little bit long, just so I can change flies three or four times, no problem. And again, just uni knot that to my Invisa swivel here. So that's my typical leader build, nice and short. It's probably four and a half feet, four feet for my sinking line here. So that's the leader, and then I fish all my flies with non-slip loop knots, which is a pretty easy knot, and I'll show you guys at the end of this. I'm gonna use 30 pound mono so that it's visible so that you guys can actually see it. But I'll show you the knot that I just tied this fly to. Now the rationale behind the loop knot is quite simple. When you 
you want a nice loose connection on that hook eye so that fly can turn and kick and flutter and move. If you have a knot cinched down right tight to it, now your fly has to bend your leader material, which is quite a bit more difficult than turning and pulling leader material. So it helps to give your fly a lot more life and action in the water. So my hope is that you guys are going to be able to see this just fine and I'm going to tie it with the camera out in front of me so that hopefully everything makes sense. But I got a nice thick fat leader material here so you guys can hopefully see my knot. The first thing you're going to do is come in and just tie an overhand knot. Pretty simple, right? Now, I'm going to come up with the underside through my hook eye and flip this around so my loop is down and what you can see is that my tag end goes through the overhand knot the same way that it came out. Tighten down your main line, pull it down towards your hook eye. Now if you come up onto your main line and tie a double overhand, slide that down, grab your hook bend and pull it tight, you get a perfect non-slip loop knot. That's the knot that I've used for, I don't know, five or six years now. Super reliable, super easy. You can even tie it with wire for all you pike and musky guys.